Hello and welcome to this new episode of Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers podcast. For those new to this podcast, I am Matilde, I'm your host. I'm an inner transformation mentor supporting women in healing mother wounds through women's circles and through the one-on-one 10 weeks program. If you're interested and you want to know more about these offerings, you can check out my website, womenreclaimingtheirfullness.me. Now today, for today's topic, we're going to talk about boundaries and I'm very, very excited about this episode. We're going to talk about the three steps process to set boundaries with your narcissistic mother. Boundaries can be the biggest challenge we face as daughters of narcissistic mothers. Why? Because we have been conditioned since childhood to believe that setting boundaries makes us bad and selfish and inconsiderate and ultimately unlovable. If we set boundaries, we become bad daughters. We lose people. We lose the love of our mother. We lose the people we love. We have been conditioned to feel responsible for our mother's emotional state. We have been conditioned to avoid conflict, not to upset her mothers, and also to do whatever it takes to earn her love, which comes with conditions. Love from a narcissistic mother always comes with conditions. So let me ask you, does the mere thought of setting boundaries with your mother fills you with dread and anxiety? Have you gone as far as laying it out only to be crushed by guilt straight away, you know, try and set boundaries and then immediately feel the guilt. Have you tried to set boundaries time and time again, but maybe it never worked? Your mother keeps breaking them and keeps pushing through them. If it hasn't worked so far for you, I get it. No matter how many videos we watch or how much we read about boundaries, setting them with your mother is not an easy task. So like, don't judge yourself so harshly or too harshly if it hasn't worked so far for you because it is not an easy task. It is not. She has made sure you didn't learn to set boundaries growing up, especially not with her. I am your mother. You can speak like that with everyone else, but not with me. You know, she would have used things like that. Or maybe she would have told you things like, don't you ever get angry at me. I am your mother. And this is only what she could have been saying without considering uh, with punishment, getting all the way to being violent and aggressive. So a very important thing to remember is that if you have tried to set boundaries with your mother and it hasn't worked, It's not a failure on your part. I want you to hear that. It's not a failure on your part. Boundary setting is not a one-time event. It gets better with practice. So the invitation from my heart is not to beat yourself up. An attempt that doesn't go the way you wanted is not a failure, but an experience you can learn from. And so you know what to do different next time. And I know it's painful. I know it can be very, very painful to try and try again and feel like even if you have approached it as an experience and you want to try again and try again and try again, I get it that each time it is painful. Each time emotions get stirred. And that's why I'm bringing you this three steps process today to support you with that. And don't forget, actually, I didn't mention it yet, but in the link, There's the link in the description of this episode so that you can download for free your roadmap to boundary setting with your narcissistic mother. So after you've listened to this episode, go down to the bottom in the description of the episode and make sure to download the roadmap. If you've yet to try and set boundaries because the mere thought fills you with dread, anxiety and guilt, I get it. I have been a unable to so much as speak a statement that assembled a boundary for the best part of my life with my mother and with others too. In front of my mother, the only thing I could do for years was cry. I couldn't make a point at all. I felt frozen and tears were the only thing that came. Much to her unending frustration with me, it it actually only made her even more mad. So... uh, I really truly get it if you find setting boundaries like an impossible task. 
the good news is boundary setting is a skill and as every skill it can be practiced and learned there are ways that work and ways that don't things to say and things that's better not to say if you've listened to this podcast for a while you know i speak about the boundary setting formula which is no justification no explanation no reaction plus setting boundaries around yourself so this is the quick formula and it is still valid and when you need to set a boundary you want to think that way for sure so no justification no explanation no reaction plus setting boundaries around yourself like that's already pretty pretty impressive but today we're going to get a little bit deeper on the topic so this three-step process has worked for me and it has worked very well for clients I've shared it with and it goes a little bit deeper than that quick formula. The three steps are first prepare, then state, then maintain. Prepare, state, and maintain. We're going to go deeper into them now. I'm going to explain them one by one. So if you miss one of these three steps, chances are your boundary is not going to hold. Very often there is a lot of emphasis being placed on step two, state. When you make your statement, this is where you state your boundary. And that's where you use the quick formula. No justification, no explanation, no reaction, etc. But step one and three are equally, if not even more important. Step one provides the basis, the foundation for a successful boundary. And step three makes sure it is kept in place successfully on the long run. Let's go through the steps one by one to make things clear. So step one, prepare. This is how you get yourself set up. This is the foundation your boundary is built on. So it's really, really important. And it's made of five aspects, okay? Discern, expect, plan, care, and internal boundaries. So let's go through them real quick, one by one. Discern. This is where you need to know your values. What is okay with you and what is not okay with you. And this is really important because to set boundaries, you need to know your values. The values are what your, what your boundary is based on. I can't accept that, therefore I need to set a boundary on it. But if I don't even know what I can accept or can't accept, then the boundary is going to be weak. If you're iffy about it, if you're not sure, if you're doubting yourself whether this is even a good idea to accept or not accept that fact, if what other people would think about that and all of that, then your boundary is going to be weak. So discern it's really important know what your values are get really grounded and they don't need to be a million and they don't need to be um, even too specific you can get general but it's important to begin to discern what your values are the second point on this on the prepare phase is expect so you need to be prepared for your mother's reaction and whatever that will be you, you need to expect that she's going to react. Narcissists, narcissists hate boundaries. So they're not going to just take them on the chin, on the chin and, and be fine with it. They're going to react in some way. So your mother is no exception. She's going to react. And this can be arguing, blaming, guilt tripping, gaslighting, raging. She can give you the silence treatment, threatening to go away. She could, be, she could use passive as aggressive statements. She could be belittling your feelings. She could be pushing to break the boundaries or she could all, go all the way to love bombing you and so on. So that depends on what is the preferred strategy of your mother. And she might just switch from one to the other even. So you need to be prepared and expect that that's something that is going to happen when you set your boundary. None of these reactions are a sign of failure of your boundary. 
This is really important for you to remember. This is just a part of how a narcissist will react to boundaries full stop. Remember, boundaries are not set to change the other person. They're set to protect yourself. So you set your boundary to protect yourself. Whatever her reaction, that's her thing. That's her story at play. But you need to be prepared to expect that that's going to happen. The next point is plan. So still part of the preparation phase, plan. Plan what you're going to say. It's really important. Set what we call if-thens. So if she says this, then I'm going to, and you fill in the blank, I'm going to leave, I'm going to answer this way, whatever it is. If she does this, again, you fill in the blanks, then I'm going to, so you set if then and you plan what you're going to say, you plan how much you're going to say, and you plan at what point are you going to stop talking and maybe hang up the phone or leave or, or put an end to the conversation. The more you plan, the more prepared you're going to be. Now, I know we can't plan for everything, but again, if you if you know your values, if you are ready and prepared to expect that she's going to react in some way, and if you know your mother, I mean, you know your mother, so you kind of know, you can predict a little bit how she's going to react within reason, and then you plan what you're going to say, that's beginning to build quite a strong foundation to your boundary. The next point is care. Care is really, really foundational to all of this. Take care of yourself and learn ways to regulate yourself so that you can hold your boundaries even when you feel strong emotions being triggered within you in the process. Because emotions are going to be triggered for you. You're standing up to your mother, the one person you've been taught all your life you are not allowed to stand up to. So it's a big deal. And it's the one person that no matter what, we do crave the love of the most. Um, despite the abuse, despite the way she's treated us, despite her behavior, there is an inner child in there. She craves that love. So standing up to your mother is a big task. It's not impossible and you can totally do it. When you follow this process, these, these three steps and all the sub-steps, you're going to be able to do it totally. But it is intense. So Taking care of yourself is really important. Having a good base level of your overall energy, being good, being able to regulate. So when you're there trying to set this boundary and maybe you're feeling anxiety rising, maybe you're feeling your body wants to shake, maybe you're feeling tears want to come and all of that is happening. And I get it. It's natural that it's happening given the circumstances when you have tools to self-regulate and you've practiced, then you can go through it and navigate it and actually feel pretty okay by the end of it. So care is very, very important. And then the, f the final point is internal boundaries. So this is very important. It's a very important step because it sets the boundaries for you. Remember the quick formula. We said no explanation, no justification, no reactions, plus setting boundaries for yourself. That's important. So when you set boundaries for you, these are the internal ones. They're not ones that you speak out loud to anyone or to your mother. You keep them within you, but you know them for yourself. Or maybe one thing you can do is if you have someone that you trust, like perhaps your partner or maybe in your women's circle or your mentor or your whoever is guiding you through this, you can speak those internal boundaries with them so that you have some level of accountability. You've told someone that this is your intention and that really usually supports in holding to those internal boundaries. So this is where you're willing to go within the interaction and where you're not. For example, some examples of internal boundaries you can set for yourself that are really powerful. I will not negotiate. I will not get defensive. I will not give any additional information away. I will not justify or explain myself. 
So those are all internal boundaries that you can set for yourself. So let's recap. So we're talking about the first phase, the first step. It's prepare and prepare is divided in five phases. Discern, expect, plan, care and internal boundaries. So once you have all of that prepared for yourself, then you get into the second step of the process that is state. Okay, this is where you make your statement, your actual boundary. And there's a few things you want to keep in mind when you state your boundary. You want to be clear and concise. You want to use a calm and firm tone of, tone of voice. You want to repeat the boundary as many times as needed without adding any additional information. Just repeat the boundary. And you want to stick to the internal boundaries that you've set for yourself. So the ones that we said just a moment ago. This is really important. Be clear and concise. It's like talking with a five-year-old, a toddler. That's what it is to try and talk to your narcissistic mother when you're setting a boundary. So you want to be clear and very concise there's no need to make big introductions to the topic, prologue, epilogue. There's no need for any of that. Get to the point, clear and concise. Use a calm and fir firm tone of voice because the thing that your narcissistic mother wants the most is to hear you being emotionally dysregulated. That has her in control and that has her winning and that has her knowing what buttons to push to trigger you further. So use a calm and firm tone of voice. That's something else that you can practice beforehand. You want to repeat it as many times as needed. So if your mother just starts going on a rant of whatever that she doesn't accept it, you look, I get it. It's okay you're feeling that way, but I'm not going to accept such and such anymore. And then she says something else and she tells you you're a bad daughter. And it's like, well, you're entitled to feel whatever about me, but blah, blah, blah. And you repeat your boundary. So you can keep on, you re keep on repeating that boundary, putting a stop to whatever she's telling you. To the point that if she's getting out of hand, you can leave or stop the conversation. And then stick to that, those internal boundaries. You are not going to negotiate. You're not going to get defensive. You're not going to give away additional information and all of that. So in this step, the step of stating, there are a couple of things that are really not helpful and also a few things that are very helpful to do. So we're going to go through them for a moment. What is not helpful when you're stating your boundary? Explaining, it's not helpful because she doesn't want to hear it. She's only going to use it against you. Justifying, definitely not helpful, because again, she's going to use it against you, and you do not need to justify, because you have every right to set your boundaries. Setting boundaries is a right of any human being. Doesn't matter what your mother thinks. Getting reactive to your mother's reactions, very unhelpful because she won. The minute you get reactive, she's in control again. Getting defensive, that again gives her the upper hand. If you get defensive, she goes on the attack. Blaming or accusing your mother, that's also unhelpful because it's going to create more conflict and she's going to remember that for a, a narcissist, any attention is attention. Whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. So if you start blaming or accusing her, she's going to get that attention and use it. And also, it's going to create unnecessary conflict. Because I'm like, you might actually want to have a relationship with your mother. And the reason why you're setting these boundaries is you want to protect yourself while you are continuing to have a relationship with your mother. This may not be the case for everyone. Some of these boundary setting might be because you want to go no contact and you're setting strong and strict boundaries that's okay too but if you're trying to keep a relationship going blaming and accusing is not going to work it's going to be very unhelpful another thing that's unhelpful is letting your inner child in the driving seat so it's okay to have emotions it's okay to crave your mother's love it's okay to crave her approval and validation it's okay to feel scared of her even it's all okay that's all okay. All those emotions are very valid and they're okay. But when they drive, 
when they get when the inner child gets in the driving seat it's like you are driving your car and you're letting a five-year-old take the steering wheel that is not helpful that five-year-old is not at fault there's nothing wrong with them but they can't drive okay so it's really important again this goes back to that step we said earlier about care when you learn to self-regulate when you learn to navigate your emotions and the waves of them then you're in control of your, of your inner child and your inner child has her place which is very important but it's not in the driving seat and then the last thing that's not helpful is giving a lot of information your mother can use against you so if you are not going to be able to make it for her birthday dinner because you want to do something else and you have other plans and whatever you don't need to go into the details of why you're not and because you have other plans and what you're going to do and where you're going to be and all those informations are irrelevant to the boundaries you're setting you're just telling her you're not going to be there that's it full stop any additional information it's going to be used against you at some point within that conversation or later on now what is helpful let's go through what is helpful stick to the plan that's helpful so you've planned in the first phase of preparing now you stick to the plan as we said be clear and concise that's very helpful ignore her reactions be prepared for them know to expect them but ignore them don't go don't follow her down all those path of victimhood or rage or frustration or whatever guilt tripping leave her alone in her own experience practice being emotionally detached now i know that this is easier said than done this is where your preparation comes in the more you've unpacked and learned tools to self-regulate, the more you will be successful here. Also, if emotions get triggered, that's okay. They can be unpacked later within a safe container, like with your mentor, with your women's circle, or in therapy. That's where you unpack the emotions get, that get triggered, not within the interaction with your mother while you're trying to set boundaries. So there, you need to be like a stone and you need to practice being emotionally detached. Another thing that's very helpful is using I statements, such as, I don't accept you talking to me like that. I don't accept you're criticizing my decisions. I require you to stop talking to me like that. So you don't go blaming and accusing, but you're using I statement, you're owning it. It's you that want things to be in a certain way. That's it. Another thing that's very helpful and important, really, really important is give consequences. A boundary without consequences is not a full boundary. I don't accept you talking to me like that if you don't stop i will hang up the phone there's a consequence so you've staged your boundary with your i statement no explanation no justification calm firm tone of voice and then you give a consequence i another example i require you to stop commenting on my appearance if you don't stop I will see less of you in the future. Clear, concise, boundary, and then consequence. Okay? And the final thing that's really, really helpful is keep breathing. Keep breathing. And I know this sounds duh, <laughs> like, but it's so, so very important to keep your state, your emotional state, as grounded and calm assertive as you can while making your statement. And breathing, it's really essential. How often when you're talking to your mother, you realize that you haven't actually taken a full breath in like however long that conversation went or however long that phone call went. I, I have memories of, it's, it's a, it's a mystery how I didn't turn blue <laughs> for how shallow I was breathing and how much I was holding my breath um, that I didn't just pass out during a phone call or during a conversation. So 
keep on breathing, practicing breathing as deep down, rooted into your belly as possible. This is something we practice within the women's circle all the time. And also with my one-on-one program, it's like the foundation. Breathing deep, deep, deep down as much as you can go within your belly. And it's not a yoga breath. It's not a fancy breathing practice. It's, it's what actually really keeps you grounded and helps you navigate in whatever gets triggered, whatever emotion. But if you can do that while you're having a conversation, such as setting a boundary with your mother, that's going to give you a real edge, a real, real edge. And also, also, and this is not to be disregarded, I know that we don't, um, we're not doing this to change them. We're not doing this to influence them and change them and make them behave better and all of that, because that would be extremely unhelpful and a waste of energy and time. But when you keep yourself calm, assertive and regulated, it also takes a lot of fuel off the explosive reactions of the other person. So it's to keep that in mind. Again, that's not why you do it, but it does work. Okay, and so we are going into the third step now. So we've talked about the prepare, we've talked about the state. Now we're going to talk about maintain. Maintain, this is where you remain consistent with your boundary and with the consequences you've outlined. Dealing with a narcissistic mother is like dealing with a spoiled child. We said that. She will test the boundaries. She will push to see what she can get away with. She will try and get you upset and triggered so that you will cave. So consistency is key. And if you're feeling like we're a step three now, so if you're feeling, oh my God, how am I going to ever remember all these steps and all these bits? As I mentioned, I have a free roadmap to boundary setting available for you in the link in the description of this episode. So go down there after the episode and download that for free. So you can have all these steps, everything outlined in the roadmap so that when you need to set your boundary, you can go to that and prepare with with that. Use it as an actual tool. So maintain. Maintain as well has a few important key things to remember. The first one is no violation allowed, not even a minor one. If she can get away with a small violation of your boundary, she will keep pushing and make it escalate until the entire boundary is obsolete. So if you told your mother that your 100% boundary is that you don't want her to bring sugary foods to your child. That's it. That's your boundary. You are giving no sugar to your kids. There is no sugar allowed. You've set your consequence. You've told her, don't, I do not want you to bring sugar to my kids or to my child. If you do that, you are not going to be welcome in the house. Or if you do that, you're not going to see your grandchild anymore. So you've stated your boundary, you've set your consequence, she went bananas, but you actually just navigated through all of that, you repeated your boundary, and then you ended the conversation. And for a while, instead of coming visiting, bringing sugary foods, she brought apples and healthy snacks, whatever. And then one day she sneaks in like a little candy and you go, oh, well, come on. She's behaved so well up until now. That is a minor little thing. What is one little candy going to do to my child? It's going to be fine. He's going to brush his teeth afterwards. It's going to be fine. That's a small violation, but that's an opening. That's a test. She's testing. She's been a good child. She's <laughs> a good child because the narcissist is like a child. We said that. So she's been good for a while. And now she's testing your resolve. And she's doing it with something small and little, pretty much insignificant. 
and then the next time she's gonna bring two candies and then the next time she's gonna bring them a fizzy drink and then and then and then before you know it your child is eating more sugar than a candy shop that's how now this is a silly example or not it was for me because I really wanted (laughs) the first three years of my two girls to be sugar free and oh my god it was such a struggle because I didn't know how to set boundaries properly and I can't say I quite succeeded but it was it was a struggle but those small violations I allowed them all the time all the time I always went oh come on it's only a small thing no, 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 no. No small violation are allowed. When that happens, you state your boundaries again. Oh, but I just brought one small little candy. I told you, I don't want you to bring sugary food to my child. Either you put that candy away, or actually you give it to me so I throw it in the bin, or you leave right now. And then you stick with that, you stick with that, you stick with that, and you and you give the consequence. If you do that again, you're not going to be allowed to visit. And you continue to repeat. You can use sentences like, I know what you're doing, and it's not going to work. If you don't stop it right now, then, and you give your consequence. Or you can just... We're not going to go there right now. If she's trying to, for example, guilt trip you or if she's trying to drag you in a conversation you know you don't want to go into or if she's trying, she's commenting on your appearances in a way that's painful and hurtful like she always does and you told her that we're not going to go there right now. Full stop. Calm, assertive, firm tone, clear and concise. So no violation allowed, really important, no matter how small and insignificant it seems. Second point, go through with your consequences. If you said you would leave, if she acted a certain way, then you have to leave. If you said you wouldn't respond to calls after a certain time in the evening, then you don't respond. Knock your phone off blocker I, I've learned since actually working with uh, amazing clients that were very creative in their boundary setting I didn't know that this was even possible but I've learned that on your phone you can actually block a phone number for a certain interval of time so if you've decided that's where you strengthen your boundaries with your own internal boundaries but if you've said that you wouldn't respond let's say after 9 p.m because that's your time you're at home with your family or after seven or whatever you don't want to respond to your mother at that time because you know she's going to ring and say things that upset you and then keep you up all night thinking about the nonsense that she told you on the phone then you can actually block her phone number for that time and have it that it unblocks at whatever time the next day that you decided you're happy if she rings you. And that's that. So you need to go through with your consequences. If you said she wouldn't be allowed in your home again, because she's done something that that is the consequence, then you don't let her in your home until there's a clear sign that she got it. It's essential that you give consequences, but not as empty threats. You need to go through with it if she keeps insisting with the unacceptable behavior it's very 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 important repeat that's the next point repeat 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 a boundary is not a one-time event it may take time and your mother will try from time to time to break the boundary as we said it with the violation she will push she will test so you repeat your boundary and the consequences and then you go through with the consequences there's no space for her. You're setting, like literally, when you Im- imagine picture setting boundaries, it's like you're putting a brick wall one side and a brick wall the other side, and the only available path is the path in between these two massive brick walls. If your mother doesn't want to go through that path in between, which is the one you accept, then she's w- crashing into one of the brick walls there is no way that's what you're doing that's why it's called boundary okay so 
brick walls, brick walls, brick walls, really big, solid, thick brick walls and one path in between that she's allowed to tread. And you decide what that path is. And the final point of this phase, of the phase of maintain, is be ready for a change in tactic. This is very common and it's a sign actually the boundary is working. So if your mother is usually guilt tripping you or being very aggressive and all of a sudden she switches to love bombing or, or the opposite, she's actually trying to love bomb you usually and all of a sudden she goes into rage. This does not mean that you're failing. It's actually a really good sign. It means your boundary is working. She has met one of those brick walls. So now she will try to go around it in a different way. Yeah, so if banging her head on the wall didn't work, now she's gonna try and take it down brick by brick. She's going to try a different way. If making a scene hasn't worked, she may try to guilt trip you and go maybe with the victim role. If that hasn't worked this time, she may try to send you flying monkeys or she could suddenly love bomb you. If you're not sure what love bombing looks like, because I've mentioned it a few times today, listen to episode 52, dealing with love bombing from a narcissistic mother, where I do explain exactly what that looks like. So your practice is to be prepared for it all and give no space for any of this. When you feel your boundaries being pushed on, you go back to it and to the consequences, no matter what the way she's going at it is. So a change in tactic you got to be ready for. So that's the maintain phase, really important. Again, let's recap. When you maintain your boundary, you don't allow any violation, you go through with consequences, you repeat the boundary, and you're ready for a change in tactic, in manipulation tactic from your narcissistic mother. So to recap the boundary setting is not a one-time event, okay? It's really important you remember that but a life skill that can be practiced and learned. So you can, you, now you have your roadmap to boundary setting. Again, make sure you go down in the description of this episode and download your free roadmap so that you have all these steps for yourself as a tool, you can use it and you can start practicing. And you can start practicing with things that don't feel too challenging just yet. Start with smaller ones, start with boundaries that you know are not going to trigger you as much and maybe they're not going to trigger your mother as much and go gradual and practice it and it's important to remember that the boundary doesn't start and end with just one statement okay but it's a three steps process prepare state maintain there are no failures in it only experiences that will teach you what to do different next time. So if you go through prepare, stay and maintain and whatever, it doesn't work. Well, then you go back to prepare and you prepare differently. You change something. Pro maybe you haven't prepared enough or maybe you've skipped one of the prepare parts. What have you skipped? Maybe you haven't done enough self-care or maybe you haven't planned what you were going to say enough or maybe she caught you by surprise with the way she behaved and reacted and you were prepared for every reaction but that one. Now you're also prepared for that. So go back to prepare, prepare more and then again go back to state and maintain and continue. You can do this. You can totally do this. I know you can. This process works. Remember that boundaries are not set to change your mother. This is really, really key. This is really key because so many times I hear this from clients, from women sending me emails and they're like, oh, I've set all these boundaries, but my mother isn't changing. She's not going to. She's not going to. If she's a true and true narcissistic mother, she's not going to change. So, and at the very least, that change is not in your hands and it's not down to you to change her. If then she gets enlightened and she starts doing really good therapy or she goes to like some trauma work and she actually really starts digging deep, but that's her choice. That's going to come from her. It's never going to come from you. So 
boundaries are not set to change your mother they're set to protect you and you have every right to want to protect you your life and everything that's dear to you the level of boundaries you will need to set is personal to you and to your situation so if you're not sure about how much how many boundaries or what do you need to do or set seek support okay you can this is something we work quite a bit in the one-on-one -on -one program and we do also work with this within the women's circle so if you're needing support those offers are available and then otherwise you can seek support wherever you feel resonance with but seek support to understand what level of boundaries you need because that's going to be personal to you and it's not very helpful to compare an awful lot in this if your mother gets upset reacts or tries to push over your boundary this is not a sign of failure a narcissistic mother will not take a boundary well and most times the reaction will be a part of it that's why you want to prepare we said that this is not something you can control or change ultimately you can't change her behavior either if she does like she can't change her behavior either if she doesn't want to all you can do is stick to your plan and keep being strict with the consequences and seek support for what emotions the entire process triggers within you feeling ups upset or emotional after you've set a boundary with your mother is not a sign of failure on your part it is a very natural thing to happen standing up to your mother is the biggest challenge you will face that's why when you set boundaries successfully with your mother then setting boundaries with everyone else it's so simple i can really tell you that from experience i was chronic at setting boundaries i was a people pleaser i was allowing anyone to step all over me i was like the doormat of every group every place in work i mean i was working all hours for no money um or very little money sometimes also for no money i was doing extra hours for no extra money just because i was i was asked to just to people please just to be accepted just to be loved so no boundaries at all and absolutely obviously chronic at setting boundaries with my mother once i learned to set boundaries with my mother the everything else changed it was like laughable how easy it was to set boundaries with other people after i faced the biggest monster <laughs> so um it is the hardest challenge or the biggest challenge you will face but once you face that everything else is going to be a lot a lot easier but emotions will be triggered and this is where you prepare yourself you learn to self-regulate and you make sure you have the right support around you having a group of people supporting you in this having a mentor that guides you through this that is an amazing support i didn't have like i did have mentors amazing mentors but i never had one that was specific to this work because i couldn't find one uh there wasn't i didn't find a service available that was specific on this topic that actually really worked for me there wasn't a whole heap of rationalized stuff but there was actually take really feeling into how i was feeling so so i created one <laughs> and that's that's why i run women reclaiming their fullness exactly for that reason to provide a space where you can get the right support when you're facing this specific uh challenges with a narcissistic mother so with that said uh, this is how you set boundaries prepare state maintain three steps process the roadmap to boundary setting the free roadmap to boundary setting is in the description of this episode so go click on the link download it for yourself so you can have it there and if you have any questions or any reflections on this share them with me on my email at matilde at women reclaiming their fullness.me and i will support you as best as i can so with that i send you lots of love and bye for now